join me in welcoming to the stage Shelly Peterson. Good morning. It's an exciting time in this industry space. Um, I'm Shelly Peterson. I'm from Lockheed Martin. Um, we have four business areas within Lockheed Martin. We have uh, Lockheed Martin Aero, missiles and fire control, rotary mission systems, and space. I work within space, but I also work with the corporate division who looks at AR across the corporation in all four of those business areas. One of the questions that we asked early on is, can we use AR to do just this, to get ahead of the curve? Um, how do we use AR to become more competitive? Um, is it something that we just want to translate into because, which is not something that Lockheed Martin usually does? Or is there a, a true advantage in this technology? Um, this is what we do within space. Um, these are relatively small numbers for manufacturing. But when you look at uh, manufacturing in space, these are very large numbers. Um, we have over 100 plus consecutive successful Atlas launches, um, 800 satellites in the last 50 years. Um, some very exciting uh, forward thinking technologies. Um, in short, this is um, what our space looks like. Designing, building, testing, and flying spacecraft from the ground. And then also living in space. Um, so how can AR play a role across the life cycle of these products, which we refer to as uh, the digital thread or digital tapestry. Um, and then again, why? Why are we looking at AR for these activities? Can we save? Um, and to look at the way that we uh, consider the information flow, I want to step back for just a moment. You know, when we look at information that we access today, we have um, paper, books, um, magazines, we have our digital forms, our phones, tablets, and uh, computers. What do you recognize about these sources of information? What's similar across all of these? It's, in general, it's a rectangle of data, right? It's uh, almost always in rectangular format, um, and it's, uh, is something that we access throughout our daily lives to the degree that we forget that it's rectangles of data. Um, from our mail to our TVs, I love my, my smartwatch. Um, and then even in our vehicles and our environments, we see these rectangles of data all over the place to the degree that we're quite fascinated with our rectangles of data. And what does it look like within our environments? Um, within Lockheed, we still use paper in many of our environments. Um, in this case, we're building a spacecraft and in the periphery, just outside of this picture, we have the computers where the technicians uh, go to reference the data, they mentally log that, and then they go to work on the spacecraft. And then they go back to the computers to log their data um, and it's this back and forth that really isn't that efficient um, when you look at the, the workflow. Um, in this case, we have uh, technicians who are working inside tight confined spaces and they have to crawl out of these tight confined spaces to log their data. Um, or as you see here, you have uh, people in clean room suits just outside of the environment also logging data. Uh, sometimes it takes a whole team um, and then in many of our environments, we have ladders and platforms where they're having to crawl up and down. So you can see, you get the picture of uh, what happens when we have to reference data through these traditional sources. So how does it change um, when we look forward to the future? Uh, this is the concept that surfaced about five years ago. So what would uh, future space look like when we're needing to access and capture data. This is what they came up with. What do you notice about this? It's still a rectangle of data. It's just a see-through version. Um, and at that time, that's what uh, our futurists envisioned for the future. Um, they were onto something. When I talked to them about these concepts, I said, but you can see through it. You can see through it to your environment. I said, okay. So there's a concept there where 
um, it's very valuable to be able to see our data within our environment, or more like our environment as we're viewing the data. But in this case, it's still a rectangle of data. So this is what we uh, first experimented with um, back in November of 2017. So in, <laughs> in this case, we um, had augmented reality overlays within our environment. So we're not looking at rectangles of data. How does it change things when you have data represented spatially within the environment? And what we found was that it's huge. It has a significant impact. And I'll go through that in upcoming slides. Um, we also found for training purpose, uh, you can capture a concept so much more thoroughly and quickly when you have the data in the environment and it's not in the form of that rectangle of data. It changes the interpretation level that's required when you're uh, picking up a new concept. So here's how we break it out. Um, I knew that we would need to be able to measure. In Lockheed, we measure, we quantify everything. So we also needed to measure and quantify uh, the way that this technology could benefit us. So when we look at manufacturing spacecraft, we break it up into these categories. To absor uh, observing and orienting and then making the decision and then taking the action in the manufacturing process. So in the past, observation is observing these uh, texts, picture, sometimes model data. And then you have to mentally translate that data to what's in the room, the physical object, and how that, that data maps onto that physical object. And then with spacecraft, um, we don't usually maintain spacecraft once they're launched. For satellites, um, we have to make sure that it's perfect when it's built. So um, there's quite a decision process to make sure that the actions that are being taken are the right actions. And then, of course, the action to drill or run torque applications or whatever their process is in building the spacecraft. And when you look at this, there's a lot of interpretation going on. They're interpreting the 3D models into that 2D instruction, that rectangular data. And then there's interpretation to take that rectangular data onto the physical object in the room. And then there's a collaborative interpretation to make sure that it's the right activity. Now watch what happens when we apply AR and MR. Okay. We observe through the visor, and then they take the action. And this is what that looks like uh, for one of our activities. This is a torque application. So the different colors are different type of bolts or fasteners. Um, they're um, bolting this panel to the forward bay cover on the Orion spacecraft. This is a human spaceflight spacecraft. Okay, the text data, we had to intentionally blur. I apologize for that, but that was a requirement to show this picture. Um, but that data is the, the tolerance data uh, that goes along with the bolts. And then you also see numbers that provides a torque sequence. If they have to capture this from the 2D rectangular data, it takes a while. Um, as a matter of fact, this observe, orient, decide, we see repeatedly throughout our manufacturing process taking about half of the time for a spacecraft. Um, it's so significant, we gave it a name, we call it information overhead, which is the time to hunt down the information and verify that it's correct before the action is taken. So our original goal was to optimize this information overhead process. Uh, this first time that we ran this, we cut that time by 99%. Okay, it's a little bit difficult going into an executive to say we met our goal at 99%. That, that created a new problem. But when we look at it across the entire activity, it's about a 50% reduction. Okay, 5% reduction is huge. A 50% reduction is phenomenal. Okay, this is really catching the attention within our environments and our executives uh, and the potential of this technology, especially in the very first run. Now, that was 
over a year ago. Um, and we have done quite a bit since then to look at different opportunities within our environments. So here's another way that you can think of it. Um, with the rectangles of data, you can pick up the concept and you can believe that concept, but when you're working with AR, there's a whole different level of understanding and comprehension that takes place much more quickly. It's, it's phenomenal how quickly you can pick it up and uh, understand with a complete different level of comprehension uh, than through your traditional methods. So here's what it means to the programs and the teams. Um, again, this was from the early stage activities that we ran. 85% uh, reduction in training, and not just training, but ramp up. So we have technicians who are very skilled at what they do, but they may be stepping onto an activity or a program running that specific process for the first time. And we saw that what would normally take eight hours is consistently taking more like 45 minutes to comprehend. Significant time saver. Um, for alignment, uh, DFI is also a, a, another type of drilling. Um, you'll see two drilling columns here in Torque. Um, we're bringing down the times by quite a bit. The difference in the two drilling columns is something that I'm also very excited about. So in this column, we had technicians who were very skilled with that activity. They had performed that activity before. In this case, we had technicians who were new and had never performed that activity before. And look at the similarity between the two, how it was brought down and the amount of time remaining for the action. So what that tells us is that we can take a very seasoned technician or a very green technician and they can accomplish the task in the same amount of time and with very similar quality levels. And you know, that does significant things for uh, project management and uh, understanding the time that it takes to, to complete a task. Um, we also had a, a drilling error that was awarded in that first activity where a mylar is typically placed on the panels for the drilling location. And the mylar had been accidentally labeled on the wrong side. And so when they placed the mylar on the panel to drill, it was inverted. And so it indicated that they should drill on the left when in reality they should drill on the right. They put on the visor to see the tolerance data and the other uh, details that went along with the drilling location and they noticed this right off the bat and prevented that uh, drilling error, which on a spacecraft panel is significant. You don't want to drill the wrong location on a spacecraft panel. Here's what it means to our manufacturing and production at a higher level. Um, we're expediting delivery times, we're lowering um, project costs, uh, we're simplifying those complex ideas um, that enables the reduced cognitive load. It also enables our experts to support more broadly ac across the programs because they're not pulled in as often. The technicians are capturing that uh, without their support. And then at a, a higher level for the corporation and the customers, um, are you familiar with this triangle where they normally say you can only accomplish two of the three? That you can build a products uh, more quickly and at lower costs, but that's typically um, a toll on quality. Or you can build a better product at a lower cost, but it's going to take more time. Um, what we're finding is that we can accomplish all three. We can build it more quickly, and that, that includes using AR to build the spacecraft but it also includes the time that it takes to build the instruction. Um, we can build the instruction in AR more quickly than we can build the instruction in traditional methods, that rectangular form of data. So I'd also like to say a thank you to the companies who, um, the dreamers, who are making this technology real. Um, it is, having an influence on companies like Lockheed and how we do things. Uh, we encourage you to follow your curiosities because it really does take what we thought was a, uh, a capability for someday and it's bringing it into today. And I think if there's enough time, I could take some questions um, and we do that through Slido. 
Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to post them up on Slido. Okay, so the question is, isn't the rectangular important for giving the data borders and classification, helping the user to navigate within the data? Um, it is important, but we're finding that we can accomplish more uh, through the non-rectangular. So in some cases, we're not completely replacing rectangular, but we are starting to make that transition and to find the areas where we get the, the most advantage out of replacing some of the rectangular form? It's a good question. Is it fully operational currently? Depends on how you define fully operational. So we're using it across many programs in many different environments. It has not scaled across the entire corporation yet or even across the entire space organization. Um, with us only having started our first pilot in a manufacturing environment about a year ago, uh, you can imagine there's a lot of work that we're, we're doing within the environments. Uh, we consider it to be controlled introduction, which is no longer a pilot. A pilot is determining whether you want to pursue the technology or not. We've already made that decision and we're going to controlled introduction, which is the uh, strategic roadmap for implementation. And then, let's see. Are you looking into collaboration with other AR solutions? Yes. Uh, we're looking at many different solutions. Um, and they're not all built in-house. Um, as a matter of fact, most of what we use is not built in-house. Uh, are you considering to replace HoloLens with Magic Leap? We assess many of the technologies that are out there. We have uh, many, many, many different applications, so it's not uh, just one that we're pursuing. We look at many different technologies. Um, in addition to AR, are you using VR for training purposes? Yes. Uh, we have a, an area called the Collaborative Human Integration Lab, the CHIL. And the CHIL is highly focused on VR. And we find VR to be beneficial for training environments, especially for military ops training, where you need the peripheral. Um, let's see, is AR accurate enough for the space industry? Good question. So. Um, in some cases, we need very fine tolerances. In other cases, we need information to go along with those environments. Um, so it is accurate enough. We also ran an activity recently where we were placing sensors on panels. We have sensors, um, fasteners. We have uh, accelerometers that we place for tests. And most of those need to be within a half inch resolution. Um, we were in an environment where <laughs> The devices didn't recognize the panel composite, the floor, because it was a, an epoxy, or the walls or the ceiling, because it was a high bay environment. We still found a way to meet 0.1 inch tolerance, which to us was significant. Um, and that was for components that had a tolerance level of 0.5 inch. Um, can you emphasize, as for the platforms we're using, um, one of the platforms that's been very beneficial to us is Scope AR's WorkLink. Um, it allows us to build content very quickly and easily. As a matter of fact, I brought in a high school intern, and we pointed that intern to an online training. Uh, he spent about two days ramping up, and then immediately started building work instruction. And he could build it very quickly. We're having trouble keeping him busy. So um, it's exciting to see uh, how quickly that we can ramp up in this space. Uh, what's the biggest problem? Uh, that needs to be solved to make it fully operational. Um, there are several there. Of course, security is of great interest to us at Lockheed Martin. Um, that's one that is significant along with MDM services to tie into our existing uh, database systems. So we don't see it as an instant transition over into a completely new form of work instruction. For many of our programs, we need to take what exists and migrate it. So that's a challenge. And you want me to wrap up now? One more? Um, let's see. Uh, 
Um, what HMD are you using? Uh, at the moment we're using HoloLens and then we are also working with many other HMDs. And the apps are not in-house. They're primarily external. So thank you and uh, I look forward to visiting with you today. Thank you, Shelley.